Well, Chris, here we are once again with our Enagic Web System family doing another live training in week four. Pretty exciting stuff, don't you think, buddy? Definitely. I'm very happy always to make sure that everybody's coming with us. Yeah. I want to start a few minutes early, everyone, uh, to make sure everybody can join and we can say hello to all of you. So uh, next week, we're going to start showing you how to market your Enagic website online. And if you've been with us through sessions one through now, today is four, so if you've seen one through three, you know you've got a pretty good handle on what's going on. You've got a good handle on the EWS, the back office, all of its features, and what is coming next is uh, tonight we're going to kind of recap everything, review everything. I want to go over every aspect that we taught and show you some another uh, customizations that you'll need to make in your back office before you actually start the traffic activities that we're going to start next week. So we're going to cover a lot of that stuff and then run through some scenarios of what happens once you start dri driving traffic, how the prospects come in, what happens at that point. We're going to review all that and how, again, we're going to run through the, the database aspect real fast, the, the mastering the follow-up, so that once you start taking action on our final class next week, week five, you'll be absolutely ready for what's to come next. And the rest just takes off from here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the training at this point. That has helped you quite a bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to show my screen this evening, and we're going to talk about all the different aspects of everything we've covered up to this point. So again, I want to thank you for coming, and we'll go ahead and get things rolling this evening. Now, like I said, next week we're gonna, you know, we've covered a lot of things, and you might not have watched all the training. So I'm gonna hold any questions that might come up about things that we've covered up to this point. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, and I'll show you that real quick. You just go to your web browser, you type in youtube.com forward slash my Kong and power. All right, and that'll pull up the Magic Web System YouTube page. And if you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see where we have our playlists by Nagic Web System. And you'll see in the playlist we have week five training program right here. This is all the trainings up to this point. So you just click on that, and you'll see one, two, and three. And you can catch up on everything that we're covering tonight. All right, so some of the things you want in place before we start driving traffic is you want to make sure that your sites are ready and um, optimized. First thing you want to think about is your domains. If you don't have a web domain, make sure you get one. You go to godaddy.com. Write that down if you, don't, if you haven't heard that before, but go to godaddy.com and pick out a domain name. You don't have to do this, okay? For people a little upset that you know we said you have to do this you don't have to do it it's only eight dollars and ninety five cents a year and you have to be careful when you sign up with GoDaddy because they will try to add on a bunch of stuff they'll have you try to pay for multiple years they'll put on all kinds of stuff it's eight dollars and ninety five cents a year so just make sure that all the add-ons are unchecked and during your checkout process you're careful about it because you don't need anything but just a year of a domain name uh, we do provide you with default domain names, and they look like this. Uh, this is a demo account, but if, you're, if your username was Sally, it'd be sally.yourbodyiswater.info or .org.com. You can see how, how that works into it. So whatever, if we give you a free domain name. The reason why you want a domain name is because in, if you want to rank in the search engines, you need to have a domain name set up. Uh, to, to do that. Um, the domain name aspect, which we call true domain hosting, is a trick that Daryl and I have been exercising for many years. It provides you the ability to take an, a replicated website, deliver it to the search engines in a way where they think that you've gone out and you've had your website designed and you've had your site uh, you know, uh, hosted by a hosting company and all these things. So it's it's it, it gives Google and other search engines exactly what they want to see when they go to rank a website. And think about it. Google wants to have the best search engine database in the world, and they do. 
and it's because they have very strict rules about things. They don't want you to Google something and end up with a bunch of spammy sites that don't relate to anything. They only want quality websites with quality coding. Every site is coded with programming, which my brother does, Daryl, uh, out in Costa Rica. He's my business partner. He's built all these sites, and he's coded all of them in a certain way so that they can be ranked in the search engines. So you've got some power beneath your fingers. And I've yet to see any replicated website system built this way because they just don't put the money and the time and investment into their system to be able to, to really do this type of thing. So you've got something special here. We've, take, we've taken many years of our experience in, uh, in this business and applied it to Enagic. So we're really excited about it and we're happy to, to tell you that you absolutely can rank your site and it will happen. But you need that domain name. So go to GoDaddy.com and get a domain name. Think of something quick and easy. Uh, easy to to tell people about, easy to remember, easy to spell. Always keep those things in mind. Using Kangen and Enagic, uh, you know, there's been some compliance rules about that in the past. I don't know that Enagic uh, would approve of such things because they are their trademark name. So you really need to think about that. You might want to shoot an email to compliance at Enagic.com to ensure that you are compliant as far as your domain name is concerned. But at the end of the day, most people can't spell Kangen anyway. You'll have to spell it to them and explain it to them every time you tell them. So come up with something, you know, we've got some domain names like phdrinkingwater.com, that's a good domain name. alkalinriver.com, that's a cool domain name. These are things you can add brands to, you know, you can brand yourself to that you can really have fun with, you know. Um, I can really think of a million ways you could write some ad copy for that anywhere that you are, you know. So just be creative and think of things and if you need some tips Feel free to write into EWS and we'll, we'll help you along the way. So once you get your domain name, you hit this live chat button and you get us. You get us to, uh, it's right here, always right there for you, and you get us to help you set it up. So once you get your domain name, you contact Live Help and we will log into your GoDaddy account and set it up for you. It's a free service that comes with all of your websites and we do that to help you along the way because you can configure it yourself, but it can be a little tricky. So let me show you that page real quick. Configure domains, that's what it looks like. And we do have a guide uh, available for you as well. But, you know, it can be a little troublesome for most. So we just do that for you, no problem, quick and easy, and you're up and running. So before you start driving traffic and you start uh, putting up a blog and you start your Facebook page and you start really putting your link out there and sharing quality information with people, you absolutely want to make sure your domain name's in place. All right, so under Manage Websites, this is where I'm at right now, will be all the websites that you have subscribed to. Whatever those are will be listed here. So just as an example, I wanted to show you a few different things. Um, let's do E4. Configure website. It'll bring you into a page. Configure website. Now in here we have different options. This is an important part of, you've got, you've got to make sure you go back and do this if you haven't done it yet. The name to display is the name that will display on your website. So whatever your name is or you and your partner's name or you and your lover's name, whatever, you want to put that there if you guys are working the business together or a business name. You can put a business name there as well. Whatever your uh, Enagic LLC might be or whatever you're doing, you can put there. The phone number will be listed directly on your site, so you want to make sure you have that configured. And it's important, guys, if you put a phone number down, answer the phone. <laughs> That's part of the fortune and the follow-up, which I talked about last week. So put a phone number in there that you're going to listen to and you're going to answer. Um, I like to create other lines for my other businesses so that I know when a phone rings what it is. Um, there's signal rings and all kinds of things you can set up. So come up with a number and a way that you know when that phone rings, it's for business and you pick up that phone. That is how you master the follow-up. So make sure that you put a phone number in there that you're going to pick up and you're going to be responsive to. All right. Uh, on the E4, it's, there's an option to enable your DVD opt-in. Okay. So if you're not doing DVDs, just click no, and there, that opt-in thing will not jump out at you. This uh, beautiful little opt-in uh, window won't slide out. Okay. That'll disappear if you turn that off. And then the order button is another important thing to think about. You can turn it on and off, and there's several sites that do that. Okay, so if you're marketing your site online, I would turn it off because you're 
goal with the E4 website is to get prospects. If you have it on, like it is now, this right here will be available. And if someone clicks it, they can order a machine. And this can be useful, but if you're actually looking for leads, you may not want them to see the price tag because you need to build value first before you show them the price. So you can actually go ahead and turn that off in your back office very easily with a few buttons. You just, yes or no. Okay, let's set it to no because I want to show you what happens when we do that. And then the stat counter code, which I want to cover here in just a second because that's an important part. We want to track your progress and uh, see what's happening on your site. So I'll cover it again. I've covered it in a few classes, but I'll go quickly through it this evening so you can see what you're, what you're to do. All right, so let's go back to the four. I turned the online ordering off and I turned the DVD opt-in off and you can see clearly there's no order button so nobody has access to that page and that DVD opt-in is not sliding out. So it's up to you on what you want to do. Just a side note, the DVD opt-in is one of the best lead opt-ins that we have so if I would absolutely do it and all you got to do is make sure you pre-qualify anybody that opts in. It's a great way to open the door uh, with people. They give you far more information than, than a regular ebook opt-in. You'll almost, mostly, at least I would say 80%, always get a good phone number because they're asking for something for free to be mailed to them. It's a physical product. It just does something to the, to the human psyche, so it's a really great thing to get involved with. So pick out a DVD from somewhere. If you've got questions on what's compliant, what's not, contact compliance at anagic.com and get into the DVD opt-ins because uh, it is a great prospect. Just as a tip, if you get somebody and you're not sure if they're worth the money to send them a DVD, you can sidestep them and go to kingandemo.com. can always say, hey, you know what, I just uploaded this to the internet. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big part of the DVD. If you want, you could just watch this real quick or however you segue into that. A lot of people will sidestep people that haven't really showed a whole lot of interest and then they walk them into the DVD and still are able to create good success. And we've got Bobby doing that. So you can leverage this free website, kangandemo.com, to sidestep people that might not be fully uh, you know, to the point where you feel like you want to invest in this, the postage stamp and, uh, you know, the cost of sending them a DVD. All right? E5 is an example. Here's, this one's a little bit different with your uh, customizations. Name to display, just like before. Put your good phone number in. Here you can put an intro on the site. All right? And we have a default, a global home business that you can feel good about. Now, before you go in and customize these things, Please make sure you don't say anything crazy. Make sure it's compliant. Uh, don't say, don't make claims or do anything crazy. But this is the way it, way it works. I'm sorry, I get my tabs all mixed up here. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, five. Where's it at? There it is. So this text here on your screen, a global home business that you feel good about, is customizable. All right, and you can go back to the back office and you can customize it by putting the line in there and the line in there and you want to make sure that you only use these characters. Approximately 22 characters for the first one, 40 characters for the next because if you overdo it, it won't look right. All right. You can also change the form right here. It says get more info. You can make that say something else by typing it in there and then we've got 18 characters max. And then if you're doing any type of Google Analytics you can paste the, that in there. If you need help with that, you can contact support, but that's kind of an advanced thing. But if you're into Google Analytics, you're doing some Google Ads or whatever, you can paste that code in there and you can track everything on your site through Google Analytics. And then you've got our stat counter code, which I'll cover here in just a second. And then you've got an About Me tab <clears throat> where you can customize your own story. Just like everywhere else in your website, I mean in your back office where you write emails and whatnot. You can do all kinds of fancy little things. You can add a picture of yourself. You can add images just like your, your emailer. So if you caught the last class, you'll know how to do this. And you can easily insert any image in your library into this on your about page. Okay, so you can customize your own story. Again, make it compliant. Don't go crazy because uh, we don't want an adjective to shut this down for us. You know, we want to be able to give a personal story and a testimony of some kind uh, and provide a personalized part of the website. So E5 has an advanced configuration. 
E6, the same thing, guys. You know what all this is here, adverts, um, about you. We do have an about you text you can type in, and then your stat counter code. So you can come here and customize all this. So whatever site you're using, make sure you come in and do this. Same thing over here. Uh, E7, products to display. You can do all products, or you can do the Inespa. Okay, a lot of people do just target the Inespa with whether it be, you know, hair salons and, and things like that. So we put that option in there. A lot of times we'll modify things for you guys. So like if there's a need that you want to, uh, for, for us to take a look at or change in your back office, always remember that there is a, a wish list, which is right here. So tr under training support, there's a wish list. You can click here and you can suggest things that you need. So the Inespa was a suggestion from a, from a EWS member and we put it in there so they could isolate that product on their site. All right, back to manage websites. Okay, we did EA. I think we pretty much covered everything that you need to know. So just make sure you get these areas updated and you have the appropriate information there. E2, I'm sorry, I didn't cover that one. Name, phone number, then you can change the skin from original to fresh air. This is what fresh air looks like. And I'll show you what the original looks like, but at the same time, I'm gonna enable the compensation presentation. So depending on whether you're using E2 to capture audience and do prospects, or if you want to share the Enagic opportunity, you can turn that off right here. And then, of course, you've got your tracking codes and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and enable it because I wanted to show you that, and we'll change it to the dark. Template. There you go. Now you got almost a whole new look in sight. Beautiful. And then, of course, we got the business opportunity button, and this is what that page looks like. So if you're not one to blow somebody's mind with too much information on the business, this is where I would send them because it's very basic. It just gives them a, a light introduction into it, whereas E5 really, you know, it gives a lot of information. It's like everything. Everything, Kangen Water, everything, health and business is located on this particular website. All right, checking my notes here. How's everybody doing out there, Chris? Uh, we're pretty quiet tonight, but there have it's been a couple of questions that I've been answering so far, but we're doing good. All right. Everybody's pretty focused on the information you've given. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, it's hard for me to do this at night, everybody. I get really tired. I get up early, and I'm working all day, and then I do the class at night, so I'm hoping that everything I'm saying comes through clear enough so that it's of value to you, because that's the most important thing to me is that everything that I teach you in this uh, class is valuable and gets you going in the right direction. It's not hard. It really isn't. It seems like it because I'm giving you a lot of information, but just take it one day at a time. It's just all about building a business in today's world. Every business has to have a website. Every business has to have some type of outreach, and every business has to get their links on the Internet. Every business wants to be in a search engine. You know, um, we're really moving towards uh, an economy that's internet-based. It really is happening. Uh, it's a great thing because you're empowered in your own home. You can do your own business from home. We have people working businesses, and we've had them on the air before, from Costa Rica, from Panama, to uh, all over the world. We have people working the business where they can't work the business otherwise. Costa Rica, they, it's hard to import the machine. So these folks are down there, close to our office in Costa Rica, and they're uh, sharing the Enagic Kangen Water opportunity in the United States and Canada and other countries where we are doing business and doing building a great business. I believe they were 6A. So the opportunity is definitely there, and the system can help you do all of that, those things. You can work this business directly from your home and do it mostly from the comfort of your own home. Yeah, I got Debbie and, uh, and Leslie. They're giving us feedback that you're doing a good job. So <laughs> Thank you, girls. I appreciate it. All right. I think I covered all of these things that you really need to focus on. Make sure your sites are configured. Make sure you have your domains. Make sure your websites say what you want them to say. Make sure you've gone through all of your websites and you know the information you have at your fingertips. Read your sites. Read your newsletter. Read your ebook. Because when you start to drive traffic and leads start coming in, those leads are like gold and you don't want to waste the opportunity to master 
the follow-up with that. So what I want to do is go into some sales scenarios and cover some different ways that people can come in and what we do and how the system works so you guys can get a big picture, tie it all together, so to speak, so that as you move forward in your, uh, your business and, of course, our class next week and you start to really put this information out there, rank your sites, you're prepared. You know exactly what happens and what to do next. I'm going to do a testimonial call hopefully soon. I've been collecting testimonials from all of you and I think it's important that you understand that other people are doing this. Uh, other people are having great success with this. Um, Rhonda Gessner is a good example. You know, If you Google Kangen Water, you'll undoubtedly find her site in the top 10. And um, In fact, I'll just go ahead and do it. Hopefully she's still in there. <laughs> Taking a risk here. All right, let's see. Let's see if we find Rhonda in here. Well, we got King & Water Lifestyle, and I believe this is Rhonda's site right here. So King & Water Lifestyle is Brett Harris and Elisa Coker. All right, they have absolutely leveraged social media, and they have built a great business, and they have gone two positions, 6A, 6A2, utilizing the Enagic web system and doing a lot of social media and sharing a lot of information in that realm. As far as I know, they haven't really branched off into all the other traffic uh, gaining aspects of what we teach, uh, such as a blog and whatnot. I know they were thinking about doing it, but just by using Facebook, they have been able to drive traffic and rank their websites. And um, what I was told by Elisa at the last uh, event that I saw her at, is that her 6A2 sale was because of EWS and her website and the fact that she is ranked in the search engines. So if we click on her site here, you'll see Brett and Elisa doing great things as one example. And I believe this is Rhonda and her E6 website. She has ranked her E6 website, and I am right. Here she is right here. All right. This wonderful lady uh, almost blew our servers up. <laughs> She went out there and, and practiced what we have taught as far as marketing online and, and uh, giving, you know, how to do that, how to drive traffic. She started writing articles and getting her blog up and she started putting information out there and she had an article go viral of which then blew her website up and of course she's ranked, she's doing great, she's got leads coming in all the time but she got an enormous amount of traffic and leads to the point where we literally checked her site to make sure she didn't have kind of somebody hacking or trying to spam. Uh, we have server administrators that watch all the traffic on a global scale. When that happened, we're like, holy crap. So we made sure that it was real. And sure enough, she had an article go viral, and she was very successful at doing that. So I'm hoping to have these two again. I've had them on previous uh, calls for you guys to actually hear their stories as well. So the proof is in the pudding. Um, and you can rank for many different keywords, whether it be a Nadir, Kangen water, ionized water, alkaline water. It depends on the work that you put into it and the time and period that your domain name ages and, uh, you know, the effort that you put into it. I always say five days a week, an hour a day. If you're working a business and you're wanting to build a business with a Nadir, just put an hour a day towards your web system, towards getting your information out on social media, blogs, writing content, whatever, which we teach you. It's all done for you. The path is laid. You know, if you just do that an hour a day, within a couple years, guys, I'm telling you, you're going to have a site that's going to be cranking away and you're going to have leads coming in and you're not going to have to worry about the next sale, where it comes from. It's called positioning yourself on the Internet, positioning yourself on the web. It's, it's creating a piece of online real estate that will feed you for a lifetime. So I applaud all of you that have followed me through this training up to this point and that are on the call this evening. Uh, I have a question, very good question from Julia. Uh, she's asking what will be better, either to provide the link to their website or if they met them, for example, at a fair, uh, if they could just go ahead and submit their information through the back office, what would you recommend? Can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Sure, that's fine. Uh, if She's asking if it's better for her to provide the link to her website directly to the member or to the prospect or if you recommend just to go ahead and take their information and submit it on, you know, your, uh, submit it on the back office. Good question, and that leads into the next part of the training. All right. Um, always take the bull by the horn. 
always collect their information first if you can. Nine times out of ten when you say go to my website, check this out and opt in, they don't do it. People are busy. You know, they get tons of business cards. If it's at an event where there's multiple people and, and things going on and you hand them a card, it's going to be tough to get them to, to follow up. So you always want to have their information and their permission to send them more information, whether it be adding them to your ebook or to your newsletter. But you also want to give them your information and point them in the right direction. So always be doing both. Always collect their information first, then hand them your business card, then give them the information, and always tell them to opt in, whether it be for the newsletter, ebook, or DVD. Whatever you're doing and whoever you're talking to, you'll know which site to send them to based on their interests. If it's straight Kangen water, E4. If it's like, you know, if they have expressed concern for the planet or um, interest in all the different product uh, water usages, like, you know, how to get rid of chemicals in your home and utilize strong Kangen water and acid water and all that, I would send them to the E6. So you just kind of like think ahead, you know what your information is, because I told you to study your sites and know it. And once you do that, you'll know exactly where to send people next. So collect their information first, and if you can do that, go to your back office, and, or go to your website, rather, it's easy to do, and opt them in. So let's say you're using the E4 and you're talking to somebody, you said, hey, can I add you to my newsletter? And by the way, I have this, I had this ebook developed that is absolutely phenomenal. I know we've been talking, you're busy. Uh, this thing will really give you the big picture. Can I send that to you? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so you collect their information and then you let them know that that's coming to them when you get back, that you'll make sure it's delivered and that you'll follow up with them in a couple days to ensure that they got it. And then I, when, I, when you get home, I would go here to your E4, or whatever, site, whatever site that you're utilizing, and put their information in. So always get their first name, last name, email, and absolutely the phone number. Collect that information. It's, if it's the DVD, then you want to get their address, their shipping address, and all that stuff as well. So that just gives you more ammo, more information, and a much stronger follow-up. So step one is the first contact, and that's what we're talking about. Give people a business card. Um, you, might, you might be doing online advertising, and you might be possibly, uh, I don't know if you might be in a newsletter. You might have had somebody write about you in your business. Whatever it may be, there's many different things that happen. Uh, so the prospects can come in either from traffic or a referral or a business card or by you, by you walking it right directly to your website and putting them in the system. So they either put their information in themselves or you put the information in. And the next thing that happens, guys, is they end up in your back office under um, managed prospects. All right, so you get an email that says, hey, you got a new prospect. You always get that from us. If you don't get EWS emails, make sure you go into your managed profile area and ensure that your email address is correct. See that? Make sure that's correct. And if there's a problem with you getting emails, you absolutely need to contact support because we can track that down for you and fix the problem. So we can identify where your problem is. Um, a lot of people are using AOL, not a good idea for business. If you're getting a domain name and you're following what we're telling you, get an email address from GoDaddy with your domain name. It used to be free, but I think it's just a nominal fee these days. So if your name is, is uh, Beverly and your domain name is phdrinkingwater.com, it would be Beverly at phdrinkingwater.com. That gives you ultimate control over your email. AOL filters spam like crazy, and they don't do a great job at it. Uh, Comcast is another bad one. Google and G Google is probably a better option, but now we've got in our Google accounts a promo promotions tab um, where they are now filtering anything that seems like a promotion. So there's many barriers when you're dealing with email uh, follow-ups and communication. It's always good to keep that in mind. But it's important that you make sure your email address and you get all EWS emails from us because we'll notify you when you get that prospect uh, in your inbox, okay? And it will have all the information. The prospect lands in here, okay, depending on how you have your stuff sorted. If it's opt-in date, that's a, a popular way to do it. Uh, let's go to, you know, if you click that button, it'll sort them. So this is old, so let's go to the newest. And uh, June 5th, 2014, you can see Chris opted in here, okay? 
So that's where they land. You get an email and then we encourage you to log into your back office and follow up with them in your email. And we did, uh, we covered all of this last week, all of this detail. So just go back to the training if you want all the detail on this. What you're supposed to do next is you're supposed to contact them. <clears throat> a fortune in the follow-up means you're going to contact them promptly. You're going to follow up and make sure that they got their ebook or the newsletter and to see whether or not they have any questions. And with an ebook opt-in and a newsletter, you might wait a couple days. Then I would give them a call. And if you have a valid email address, give them a call. I mean, I'm sorry, a phone number. If you don't, then I would email them. So you work with whatever avenue is best for them. Um, a lot of times people on ebook opt-ins will give you a fake phone number to begin with. And I just want you guys to know that that's not a, a bad thing. It's just what happens. Oftentimes I may not put a, a phone number into a, a forum on a website if I'm just wanting the information. But you must always get a good email address because they can't get the newsletter or the ebook without it. So don't ever file something away as a loss when you don't have a good phone number. <clears throat> what you do is you follow up with them in your back office. Click this little mail icon here and you're off to sending them a follow-up email. Okay? So we covered step one, the contact opt-in. What happens next? They're in your back office. You get an email. Now you know that they're there and your next job is to follow up. So you decide when that's going to be. You want to be prompt. You don't want to be, uh, you know, you don't want things to sit too long and you just want to be courteous. Your first call is about maybe following up with them and saying, did you get the ebook or newsletter? Just want to ensure that you got that, you know, with spam filters, whatnot. They may not have gotten it, in which case you would want to go ahead and try to solve that problem and make sure they get the information that they've requested. I wouldn't do a whole lot more there unless they're warm to you. And if they are, then uh, pull some in more information out of them and then make sure you always open up their prospect profile. So we're back in the prospect manager. You click this pencil icon with every single prospect that you call and you make sure that you're here when you call them. Never work a prospect from email or anywhere else unless you absolutely have to. And if you do, you got to come back to their profile and update it because this is where you're going to keep your records. Here you're going to keep impeccable records on everything that, uh, that you've done with them up to this point so that every single time you call them, you've got the information you need at hand. This will help you master the follow-up because you'll know what you did next, what you did last time, what their answers were, what they got next, and then you'll step them through the different uh, levels of information to guide them through buying a Kangen machine, getting, uh, you know, uh, referring people, joining as a distributor, getting Ucon, and building a business. So that's from the sale to team member. And then the team follow-up aspect comes into play. you got to make sure you follow up with your team and you work with them closely so that they feel supported and they feel excited about the business. So that's You never let your team database go astray. If you don't follow up with your team, your team starts getting busy with other th things and other business comes into to scope and then they follow up better than you do. Next thing you know, your team is getting smaller, people aren't paying attention, they're not focused and you're not building a successful business. All right? And just so you know, the um, under manage prospects, manage groups, you can review your team database in this area. Okay, team members will be here. And then I will pull up everybody on your team and then of course you can email them very easily from your back office by just typing in the word team. And whatever follow-up you need to send them will go out and you just follow it up with your team database. Other things to remember through the process here guys and once traffic comes in you're following up, you're walking them through the process um, building that relationship is an important aspect so always remember that um, when you first talk to them they're going to be cold they're not going to really be all that open unless they're interested and somehow they either saw an ad or they're you know somebody told them about it or maybe they saw something on TV or whatever uh, a lot of people won't be initially warm to you so your goal is just to service them give them information give them value and then follow up them, with them through the process always remember that most people give up within one to two phone calls or one to two contacts and they never do it again. That's ridiculous. That's leaving money on the table. The competitors will come in and swoop them right up. Uh, it's important to remember to follow up with them. It could be eight times. It could be ten times. 
the fortunes in that follow-up. So always be following up, working in through the system and the information, and the system itself will also help you do that. As they get the newsletters, though, they might come back to you and ask questions or opt in for other information. So it's important to, to keep that in mind. The system is working on your behalf, helping you follow up and keeping Kangen Water and Enagic in front of people. And of course, we do the one-click emails, which are pre-written emails, all loaded right here in the templates area that help you follow up very easily with every prospect. So you might be talking to somebody and, and um, you know, remember an email that we might have sent out in the past or that exists back here in the database, like be kind to the earth, and then you can insert that and easily send it out to them in a few clicks. All right, so I think uh, I, I, this, this is really all I wanted to cover. I just wanted to tie things together. You have a system that not only educates, oh, I'm sorry, actually I need to show you this. Um, the social bar set up, okay? Uh, social media is definitely another step. So you get your domain set up, you get your website going, you gotta come in and configure your social bar. All right, and you can do that under Manage Preferences. You click Manage Preferences, there's a couple options here, but um, you wanna set this up and whatever website, they, they're displayed differently. I'll show you a couple examples like e, E2, here it is. Your Facebook, your Twitter, your Digit, your stumble upon all these different uh, social media buttons, and you know down here on the E5 you can share social. They can share your social media through social media. It connects all of your social media pages to your websites. So you definitely want to come back here and configure that part of your back office. And it's really not hard to do. So go out, and create a Twitter account good to have. You can set your Facebook account to post your Twitter automatically and you never have to really worry about Twitter for a while, but it's still good to have. Open your Twitter, put your Twitter name here, ours is the Nagic Web System, and then enable it. And that will link your website to your Twitter account, okay? And it also provides an easy way for people to quickly share your website with other people. You want your sites to go viral, you want people to share your information, you've got to have social media going. All right, go to Facebook and create a business page on Facebook. It's easy to do, and if you don't know how to do it, just Google how to create a business Facebook page, fan page. It's easy. It'll be, I guarantee you'll find something that will tell you how to do it, step one, two, and three. Um, and then once you get that set up, put your web address here for your business Facebook page. So it'll be a Facebook page. It's all about Enagic and King and Water and you. And then down here you want to configure LinkedIn is another great social media site that you, you will want to uh, connect into. Create a profile with them, put your profile in here, your profile ID, and then your address, your web address and URL to LinkedIn. Once you do that and you hit save, it'll load all this stuff up into the sites. So um, however it's displayed in your sites, this will totally integrate and you'll have your sites linked together. All right, so Man, I forgot Stat Counter. Let me blow through this real quick because I want to get to questions tonight. So, uh, StatCounter.com. Write that down, StatCounter.com. It's good to have this set up so that you can track all the traffic to your website. I suggest this one because it's easy for people to set up and do. All you do is you sign up on their sign up page and then you log into your account. And when you do, you hit Add Project. You type in the URL of your project, so whatever your website URL is, whether it be domain name or an EWS domain name, you put there. You don't need to put anything here if you don't want to, um, but you could. You could say, you know, uh, business website maybe, and you're doing your E5. You put that domain name there, business website. You select the country that you're in. I'm just going to do real quick here. Uh, select your time zone. Don't click this. You don't want to make your stats public to other people. And then click the invisible tracking code. Okay, You don't want a visible counter because that's going to put that at the bottom of your site. You don't want that. You just want to keep it private. Select the invisible tracking code. If you want weekly reports, you put your uh, email address in here. You click we weekly, monthly, however you want your traffic reports to come in so you can track your traffic. It will email you a report and you hit add project. i got to put a domain name in here. Let's do that. Yeah. 
All right. Then all you got to do is go to the default installation guide right here on the right. Click that button, hit basic, and then there's your code. You copy that code. Go back to your back office, whatever site you're working with. We did the E6. You go in and you uh, configure website, and you paste it here. Remember this page? I told you to put your information in. That's where that goes, stat counter code. You hit submit, and now your website stats will be tracked on every single page, and you can track things like where they came from, um, you know, traffic by the hour, popular pages, entry pages, exit pages, incoming traffic, where they came from, what keywords they searched for. If you're doing paid advertising, this might be helpful. Uh, all this different details. Search engine wars, like what search engines feed you the most traffic. You can really get a good glimpse of everything that you're doing and how it's working over the years. So that's the final aspect that I would say that you need to set up before you take our class next week and start taking action. So let's go ahead and take some questions, guys. Excellent. Uh, so uh, you were talking about managing features or manage. Um, can you please go back to the back office for a moment, please? Yeah. All right. Okay. On their manage preferences, um, Julia is asking, what does the message for the day does exactly? Where can you see that being shown on the websites? The message for the day. Yes, under Manage Preferences. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I guess I didn't cover that. Um, this will pop up on your site, like, for instance, on the E6 or E5. Um, see that says, this is my welcome message to everyone. Happy to provide you information. So this will pop up for them when they're visiting your site. So whatever you want that to read, which we have a default message in there, you can edit that. So you can give a personal message to people on your social bar that will pop up and give them information. You might ask them to share the information or you know, like you on Facebook or whatever. You just type that in there with 255 characters and you hit submit and that'll show up there. All right, what else we got? Okay, um, next question I have. They're asking about, uh, let's say that the newsletter campaign ends. They're asking how could they restart the newsletter? Uh, but in this case, I will I'll, usually I mention that it will be better or not recommended to restart it all over. So also they would like to know about that. All right. Um, I'm not sure I would restart it, but let me show you some things here. Um, it depends. So like if you're working with your prospects and working through information as you uh, master the follow-up process in the database, I wouldn't particularly go in and restart people. But you can control that aspect and manage campaigns. What I would do instead of restarting people is I would add to the campaign. I would start doing my own newsletter and blasting it out to people. Um, I would allow this, the health awareness newsletter to finish and then I would begin to, to do my own newsletter that I would send to my entire database. In that newsletter you could do anything from uh, sharing information about you know, um, recent either world events and you know, things that kind of tie together with Kangen Water, uh, write some really nice little articles. If you're doing blogging, which is part of what we suggest you begin to do at some point, you could write short synopsis of your blog posts and include them in your newsletter and then drive those folks back to your blog and then back into your information. So uh, you come up with something. You could do a health awareness newsletter continued if you wanted and come up with a creative way to do that. But if you look here on, your, on this, this, uh, the page here, the health awareness newsletter is what she's speaking of and you can hit restart campaign and that would essentially restart the campaign for everyone. But again, that would be more, to me, it would be more like spamming people. Like, I wouldn't really care to get information I'd already gotten. 
You can do that for particular people and particular prospects if they finished or perhaps they hadn't been getting the emails and you wanted to do that. So this would be the area that you could do that, but again, I don't suggest it. I suggest sending new information, following up with people, and working them through the different stages of information. They're either going to opt out or they're going to continue on, and if they continue on, you should always seek to give them more value and more information moving forward instead of regurgitating the same thing. Okay, uh, next question I have. Uh, I have been using my Gmail account. Is that workable for my business? It's workable, but I would suggest you change. Um, I'd like to ask that person if they have a domain name set up. Uh, if they do, absolutely brand your email address to your domain name. That's the most professional way to do business in the world today. Gmail again filters email just like Yahoo, MSN and all of them. Um, it's just not all that professional. If it's all that you can do for whatever reason it can work and Gmail is probably one of the best free mail services out there to utilize but again the promotions tab is filtering emails. You may not get email from us. It might end up in your promotions tab and if you're not checking your promotions tab or your spam box you might be uh, losing a lot of valuable information. So having your own domain name and your own email address from whoever you bought your domain name from is important because every single time somebody gets an email from you they see your name at yourdomainname.com. When you put it on your business card it's so much more professional to have your name and yourdomainname.com. The more you can get your domain name in front of people the better because that's branding your business. Okay, and uh, something I would like to add to that as well, and I know you mentioned it before, but just to make sure that we cover this part, is remember that when you get your domain, uh, you need to confirm with your registrar, either GoDaddy or any other company that you use, to get the email through them. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot create the email using your domain, that's something that you will need to double check with them separately. And in some cases there will be an extra charge, but at the same time uh, you can make sure that they can give you all those details when you request for that information. Right, they do have phone support and all that stuff, so GoDaddy we suggest them because they are cost effective and cheap. I imagine an email address might cost you just a buck or two a month, if that. So. Uh, they used to give it away for free with domains, but here's their website. Uh, when you go to buy your domain, there'll be options in there for email, and just select it. I think it's a dollar a month or something. It's really not much. You come to here, and you type in your domain name ideas, and you hit search domain, and it'll give you ideas if your domain name's not available, and then you can continue to refine it with their search tool here and you'll come up with the right name. Award-winning okay, support, they say, right here. So you could call them right there if you need help. Any other questions, Chris? Uh, yes. Could you please go back to Manage Preferences again, please? They would like to know exactly what is the URL that we need to place under the Facebook tab. Uh, it would be the URL of your Facebook page. Ours is a Nagic Websites. If you, um, when you first set up your Facebook fan page for a Nagic, you select the option, it'll be a business fan page. That's what you want to select. You have a business, you create the page. It's connected to your personal Facebook page, which is perfect. You've got a personal side and you've got a business side. And then you can, you know, we'll show you later how to bring people from your personal side into your business side. They can interconnect. When you first do that, this may not say a Nagic website, so whatever domain name, uh, you know, if you want a forward slash name, you have to confirm your account, I believe, with a cell phone number, and they send you a text, and then you have to, you know, um, respond to that as some security feature. Once you do that, you can pick your own forward slash whatever. So, and they'll let you know if something's available. But initially, I think it's going to be numbers, 
but when you sign up for your page, it's going to be very clear to you what that is because you'll see it in the top bar here. So when you go to your business page through your Facebook back office or your Facebook you know, login or whatever, uh, when you actually navigate to the, your business page, this link will be listed right here. Whenever you're on it, you'll see what that is, and then you just come in and paste it here. So if you have any questions about that, we're, we're more than happy to help you. Just contact Live Support, send us to your Facebook page, we'll find it and help you put that in there. Next question. Yeah, another, I'm sorry. Yeah, another question related to this specifically is uh, if they're asking if they can use Facebook to send people to my EWS websites. Absolutely. You know, I showed you earlier, uh, Brett and Elisa Harris, uh, they're very active on Facebook, and what they do is they share lots of information. They're pumping information out all the time. They're giving, you know, all kinds of uh, links, and um, they're always linking their sites. They have multiple sites with EWS. I think they might have them all by now. And they have set up domain names for them all, and they market them. Uh, they target Facebook. They might create an image. Uh, you know, Brett is very good at, creating, you know, he's a designer too, so like he, he knows how to work with graphic design, he likes to play around with that, so he'll create some pretty cool Kangen water images and something either shocking or, you know, that pulls their attention in and he'll post that on his site, on his Facebook pages and post a link and then what happens is people share that information with others and, you know, the next thing you know you get two, three, four, five, ten, twenty hits on your face, uh, on your EWS websites and then people opt in. So all I know is up to this point they've done nothing but social media and they have had great success in ranking their site and getting leads and traffic. So the idea with that guys is you just take it one day at a time and I would start with social media first. You do everything I showed you tonight, you get everything set up and then you go set up your, your social page and then you begin you take our class next week and you begin to look at other, other training videos and I'll show you some of those here. You know, our YouTube page has everything on it, so does our video blog, but um, you just go to youtube.com, my king and power and in the playlist you'll see all of our different trainings. So we have several different playlists in here that you can tap into and watch our training sessions. Um, online training, this one right here particularly, is what you're looking for. So next week I'm going to be doing a class, but I'm not going to do the same thing. I'm going to do an introductory class to marketing online to give you guys, show you how easy it is so you don't, I don't blow your minds too much. But here, if you want to take it to the next level, you can learn there's three segments to this class. It's very comprehensive. You can learn all kinds of things about driving traffic online. And we just got that set up for you guys there. Okay, the last question I have here is um, just a, a quick review on how to uh, sign up for EWS and maybe just a quick explanation also of the pricing of our services. Okay. Um, again, back on YouTube, if you're if you're if you want to sign up tonight and you haven't signed up, watch this video right here. Learn why you need an Agic web system. This will give you a great crash crash course on EWS as a beginner and will give you a great idea of all the services that you get when you sign up for EWS. So if you really want to know and you want to get that story, it's about, I think, 20-something minutes or 30 minutes or whatever, watch that training right there, and we'll walk you through all the basics and everything of a Magic Web System. And it's right there on our main page. All right, so it's just $30, months a, uh, 30 a month you can join just by coming here to the site, um, enagicwebsystem.com. You pick which site that you want and we have explanations that tell you all the different sites and you just choose, you might want the E6 because it does the health and Kangen and it also has all the usages and it has an ebook and it's a great prospecting site as well or you might choose the E4 this is definitely a site you're going to want to rank at some point so uh, you might choose that one and you just choose whatever site you want and then you hit get this site 
and then you decide which plan you want. It's only thirty dollars a month, or you can go annual, and it's you actually save money. You get ten. Uh, you pay for ten months, you get twelve months for free. So you save some money, and you just pay three hundred dollars for the year. You don't have to think about it again. All right, and don't think you need to get any other sites when you're first starting. Just get one site. Take the training, make sure you understand what's going on, get started, and then as you bring people in, you can refer people. Uh, as you bring new people into your business, you just refer them to EWS. Once you have three, you get all of the sites for free, or you can add them on. And if you do that, it's only a few bucks a month. So let's say you wanted to come in and you wanted to add a site. Um, you wanted to get the E6 because you wanted to work the eco-friendly aspect, and you wanted to get the E4. It's just seven dollars more a month for that site, so you can get both sites for thirty-seven dollars a month. And if you go annual again, you can save more money. All right. So when you're adding your sites, so pay attention because, um, you know, for instance, if I add this site first, here's a little tip: I add the E4 and then I add the E6. Well, it worked out anyway. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, that's that's the bottom line. Any other questions? Uh, uh, that'll be for me today. No more questions. All right. Well, thank you, Chris, for all your help, buddy. Sure. Sure, my pleasure. So thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you, Chris, for your work and helping people in the questions and answer section. If we didn't answer your questions, we'll get back to you here uh, after the, the class and make sure you get what you need. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great night. Bye for now. Good night again, guys. <laughs>